ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Hey, let me say something. As you all can hear, this is Sono. And Sono did this on its own. I didn't train Sono to do that part right there, that na 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 na. I, I didn't train it to do that. It did it on its own. I mean, I had to do it maybe 12 times and it produced this. And I never listened to it. A cry for peace, freedom is what they keep on asking. Others are marching up to fight this social war. As blacks voted the price and they persist to ask for more. Peace, freedom, let it ring. Peace, freedom, what will it bring? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, what will it bring? Then it's time to give them hello. Now, black niggers call us with no understanding to kill one and all of us as it spread like gangrene. Watermelon, chicken eaten, dirty and tightly kept. And when we cry for freedom, it's our boundaries we've overstepped. Peace, freedom. What does segregation mean? Am I black or am I green? Is it about money? Color is issue one. Something must be done. Trains rushing forward to take one person away and ships rolling in. So as to stoop so low. Today when we we shall overcome Martin Luther King. Now I, I got I gotta I gotta point out some things. It says well, look today when she overcome. Deep in my heart, I see some litigation, statutes and amendments, and desegregation, assemblies, marches, straight to the Capitol. Black crime worldwide is at an all-time low. You leave us to be wondering in an ignorant state of being. As far as I'm concerned, intelligence is what I'm seeing. Treated as though we were out to lunch, waiting to return with a knockout punch. Wake up, it's time to stand up and to be counted, because on this social red tip is where you find me mounted. Ladies and gentlemen, I wrote this for a talent show. And, you know, they do that so-called Black History Month. So I figured I would put something together for that. I don't care about Black History Month. I don't care about Black History Year. I don't care about Black History Decade. I don't care about Black History at all because it's not about black. It's not about white. It's not about green. It never was. And the fact that people make it about that is the deception. It's not about color. Now, I, I didn't know that it was because there was evidence that King Tut had been to the Americas and that King Tut was black, that individuals believed that the Egyptians were black. I, I didn't know that it was because of stuff like that. His name was, I think it was Tahaka or Tanaka, uh, Tahaka. And I don't, give me one second. I, I do need to do this now because I'm bringing it up and I need to do this. So y'all just, y'all just hold on a second. The king's name was Tarhaka. And Tarhaka, he wasn't the first Ethiopian king to conquer Egypt. Now, at this point, the Assyrians were controlling Egypt. Egypt had been conquered by so many nations. And what Tarhaka and several other Ethiopian kings did is that they changed the hieroglyphics on the pyramids and made them black. So when people are looking at those hieroglyphics and talking about how, look, they were black, they're not understanding the history. Now look, again, from about 744 to 656, it's when he ruled 88 years. Well, not just him, okay? But again, pay attention. Both a pharaoh of Egypt and a king of Cush, the Cushites, spelt with a K. Now in present day, Sudan. Tahaka, his name meaning young man or young warrior, was the son of Phi. P-I-Y-E. 
the king of the Cushites who conquered Egypt. So please understand when people are saying black people were the slaves in Egypt, you got to understand this was a thousand years after Abraham. A thousand years after Moses. Well, 1400 years after Abraham, a thousand years after Moses. But again, most people don't understand because they haven't done the research. This is not the so-called, as people would like to say, the white man's history. This, who was King Taharka in the Bible? So let's find out. This is how I learned about him, because he's in scripture. He is in scripture. I don't believe this is the name they had him in scripture, but let me go ahead and we're going to check it out. Check it out. Check, 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 check it out. We're going to go and check it out. I, hey, hey, brought up the subject. I got to talk about it. Because I understand partially, I was trying to pronounce the name and I had to go to Google. Okay, and this is, we're going to go to, we'll go to this one. And we're going to go to, well, it's in 2 Kings. And 2 Kings, we're going to find it. I got to find out what part of 2 Kings. Y'all excuse me one second. I, I got to minimize y'all. The 19th chapter, verse 9. Okay, 2 Kings, the 19th chapter, verse number 9. But after Rabshakeh, he's an Assyrian, returned and found the king of Assyria fighting against Libna, for he had heard that he pulled away from Lachish. He heard it and said, respecting Tahaka, told you it was spelled differently. Okay, told you, spelled differently, no Q. But anyway, the king of the Ethiopians, king of Ethiopia, Cush, it's going to say Cush. See, Cush, the Cushites. Here he had come out to fight against you. Therefore, he sent messages to, again, to Hezekiah saying, this is what you men should say to Hezekiah. It was not him that defeated. Pay attention, the Assyrians. This is where the 185,000 Assyrian army were put to death. This is that incident. He did not defeat the Assyrians. Had the Assyrians conquered Jerusalem, they would have definitely defeated Taka because they were a much more fierce military, much more fierce. And because Assyria ruled over Excuse me, they're starting a, a meeting right now. Because Assyria ruled over Egypt at this time. Assyria controlled Egypt. Because they did that, then that's the thing. Okay? So that's the point, everybody. That's so that you'll know who Tahaka is. And then Isaiah, what you got to say? And this is the same story, just in a different part. I try to get people to understand this, but I can't. I can't force them to see scripture. Every scripture in the Bible is backed up by at least two other scriptures written by at least another writer. No scripture stands on its own foundation. So when people say, well, the scriptures say this scripture, unless you can show it to me in more than one spot, then be quiet. No scripture stands on its own at the mouth of two or more witnesses. That's the principle the scripture is founded upon. What? Hold on. We just read 2 Kings. That was not written by Isaiah. So hold on. Let's find out. After Rebshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria fighting in Lebna, for he had heard that he had pulled away from Lachish. Now he heard it said concerning Tahaka, the king of the Ethiopia, he had come out to fight against you. Almost, almost exactly word for word. How can Isaiah do that? It's written at the same time period. He's not even in the same area. Because that's how the scriptures prove to be who they is. All right. I know, I know, I know you don't believe. And that's okay. You don't have to believe because it doesn't require your beliefs. It's not written based on your belief. This, this is written that way to support itself to be its own foundation. Okay. So back to the skin color thing. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it has never been about skin color. Skin color doesn't make one person greater or worse than another. Does it make one better or, you know, incompetent than another? Doesn't prove one's worth or one's intelligence. It never did. That was all propaganda that did all of that. So do yourselves a favor. Follow me. Run quick seed. Stop focusing on color. We can never see peace if we look at color. Because peace doesn't know color. Freedom doesn't know color. When you look at color, you put yourself in a box. You're no longer free. But nobody's going to get that. They're not going to understand that. When you look at color and you focus only on color, then you are no longer free. You've just quarantined yourself. You put yourself in a box. Everybody talk about well, black people this and black people. Black people what? Black people what? Over 100 million black people in Africa. And look, they're still divided. All of those different countries don't get along. And we're not even going to talk about Eritrea, that piece of junk country, with its so-called king and their stupid laws. We're not even going to talk about them and how dumb they are arresting 70 and 80 year old women sorry Eritrea doesn't like jehovah's witnesses and so they've been on a campaign of arresting jehovah's witnesses for what the same as russia did see nobody talks about russia even though russia received that denouncing decree by the european court of human rights for what they did Eritrea does whatever it wants and they've been doing this for the last 30 to 40 years in Eritrea. But you don't hear about it. Why? Because it'll never make the news. But Eritrea is a black nation ran by black people. And look at the atrocities that black nation has caused. We're not even going to talk about the Congo. Oh, man. And the dumb things. Or what about Maui? I mean, excuse me, not Maui, Malawi. Sorry, Maui. <laughs> Malawi. What about Malawi? What about the Titsus and the Hootis? Tutsis, I'm um, Titsus. Hootis and, and, and the Tutsis. What about them? They're black. Look at the atrocities that they cause. Man is man. Man is wicked. Man is crooked. Man is imperfect. Man harms man on a regular basis. Take it from a man. This is what we do. This is our nature. We are man. It takes a lot for us not to be creatures of nature. And the very same men who talk about civilized and civilization are the very same men who sit up and act uncivilized and cause damages to civilized nations and uncivilized nations. So, Stop making yourself out to be something you ain't. You are man. Even if you are a wool man, you are still man. This is our nature. And it is necessary that we act contrary to our nature. Now, I ain't talking about no transgender. I'm saying contrary to our nature as in being man and being wicked, violent, self-absorbent. That's right. We are so stuck on ourselves that you can't even bring Band-Aid into the conversation. It's already been trademarked. All right. I just wanted to let you know about the Peace Freedom lyrics that I wrote way, way back 1990. I think it was 90, between 91 and 93. Don't know the exact time. Oh, no, I do know the exact time. When the riots happened. That's when that was done. Because everything was on the news talking about uh, black uh, suppression, and black uprising, and black this and black that. And so I, others are marching up to fight a social war as blacks have voted the price and they persist to ask for more. That's what that was all about. During that period and Rodney King and all of that, that's when I wrote that. All right, well, that's it. I just wanted to talk to you about some lyrics, okay? 
All right, now I got to go back and watch the boondocks and talk, talk to Mr. Uncle Ruckus because, you know, he's got some important things he wants to say to me. All right? All right, I'm going to go on and talk to Uncle Ruckus, and I will speak to y'all later. Have a good day, everybody. Eyes out of my, out of my, out of my, out of here. I got to get that to pull back up. One second. I minimized it, and I can't see where it went. Hold on. There it is. Whew. I, it, because it just disappeared. 